All right, so what's up, what's up? I hope you're doing well out there today. I hope your families are doing well. What I'm talking to you about today is building freight broker credit. Because to me, building freight broker credit is probably one of the most important building blocks that you'll start out building your freight broker business with because you can have all of the loads in the world, as many loads and shippers as you want. But if you don't have a reliable carrier network to move those loads for you, then you just have a lot of loads and you're not going to be able to get those loads moved. So they won't mean much. So what I want to talk to you about today is building freight bro broker credit and not the type of credit that you hear most people talking about. Most people are talking about building freight broker credit from the standpoint of building credit with banking institutions so that you can go out and get loans and credit cards. That's good. That's great. That's a part of it, but that's not what we're going to focus on today. The type of credit that I'm talking about building today is the type of credit that allows for you to move loads as a freight broker with carriers. You see, most of those carriers that you're going to be working with have factoring companies and they have to approve you as a freight broker in order for that carrier to work with you. So I thought it would be a good idea that we talk to someone who actually approves freight broker for credit and kind of give us some idea of how they evaluate freight brokers. So we're talking to Tom Croto of Opera 5 today, and he's going to give us an in-depth look on how they evaluate freight brokers so we can get a good understanding of how to build credit. So stay tuned. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Tom Proto. I'm the owner, founder of Operify. Today, I kind of like to take a minute to go over a particular topic that not a lot of people have a lot of information out online. And it's important for your company as a brand new broker to understand how to build broker credit, right? There's a lot of tutorials and there's a lot of information out there on how to build business credit and how to basically get a credit card, but there's not really that much information pertaining to the trucking industry as a whole. The trucking and logistics space is a completely different animal. And the way that I kind of like to, to set the stage is imagine yourself as an 18 year old kid that is just getting approved for your first credit card. You can't get a mortgage. You can't get you know a finance you can't get financing for a new vehicle or anything like that and so you really have to put yourself in this position that I'm this 18 year old kid trying to establish credit for the first time and so today we're going to go through just a lot of important tips and explaining and hopefully you guys will realize what it is that my credit department and how they're evaluating you and that's really what you have to look at is how the credit departments and all these different factoring companies are going to evaluate you I want to first start off and just go through, I've got a good little diagram that I like to use to explain the, the factoring relationship and how it works for a trucking company. So obviously we've got a shipper who's working with a consignee. That shipper is a manufacturer of goods, they're shipping products or whatever it is that their specialty is. Because they don't have the expertise in the logistics space or access to trucks, they outsource to a third party brokerage logistics entity, which is going to be your guys' self. Uh, you're required to have a performance bond in order that basically says that according to the FMCSA, according to, to the federal government, you're going to pay your subcontractors. If not, they can file against your bond. You're going to go out, you're going to find those subcontractors. You're going to find carriers. You've got access. You've got those load boards and the TMS platforms to be able to post those loads. You've got the ability to check whether or not that that's a viable carrier, track their insurance from point A to point B, all that kind of good stuff. So you're going to track, you're going to first subcontract with that trucking company and dispatch them to pick up at the, at the shipper, get to the consignee, get all the documentation for rate confirmation, bills of lading, et cetera. And then how the carrier gets paid, <clears throat> well, if a carrier wasn't using a factoring company, obviously they'd be invoicing the broker. Broker would be paying them in 30 to 45 days. But a trucking company, some of them don't have that. They, they need that working capital. They don't have access. They need to make sure that they've got money for fuel, insurance, their truck payment, groceries, all that type of stuff. That's where they use a factoring company because our benefit, Operify and other factors that are out there, they're getting that carrier paid today on day one so they don't have to worth, wait the 30 to 45 days. <clears throat> Plus the AP process sometimes is very difficult. You have to deal with portals. You have to create an invoice. You have to go through all of these different phone trees in order to get payment statuses. That's what we do. We are a, we are a billing machine. That's our expertise. So the trucking company sells us their documentation. They sell us their paperwork on day one. They get funded. So then that way they can move on, get up, get the next load and get paid today. So we're going to be doing all the invoicing, billing and collections on their behalf. 
it's pretty straightforward. If you guys are in this space now, starting up a brokerage entity, you're probably familiar with how a trucking company utilizes a factor. The difference of factoring a broker as opposed to factoring a trucking company is that the factoring company that you're working with, they are going to be, rather than invoicing a broker, they're going to be buying your invoices and invoicing your shipper customer. And then when it comes to payment, they're, they're going to be paying you a short little piece of your margin, but for the most part, they're holding the majority of that load and that payment on that invoice in order to pay the trucks in 30 to 45 days. So the difference between the factoring relationship with a, a trucking company where Operify is factoring the truck and we're sending the invoice to the broker and the broker's paying us, well, the factoring company in a brokerage relationship, they're sending the invoice to the shipper and they're also going to be paying the trucks. So that invoice of, say, $2,000 that you're looking to bill your customer, they're actually going to be holding. So whatever your margin is, maybe you're paying this truck $1,500. They're going to be holding $1,500. So really only, if only, only what you're factoring is that $500 amount. It's your margin that's being factored. It's not the whole amount. So uh, keep that in mind. It's a very important uh, 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 distinguishing difference between factoring as a brokerage and factoring as a trucking company. Now, what I want to go, I've got this checklist items. I've got, I want you guys to understand, hopefully by the end of this, how it is that Operify is going to be evaluating you as a brand new brokerage company. Now, there's a lot of fraud that's out there. There's a lot of double brokering companies that are up that are going to be going out of business in the next two months. So my credit department is trained to look at you through a microscope and try to determine, are you different from that other brokerage that just started up that is a scammer that's looking to shut their doors in the next you know, three months? And so there's a lot of things that they're gonna be looking at. Obviously, they're gonna be looking at credit, but if credit's not there, then they're gonna have to look at other variables in order to extend you credit. So the goal is you have to, in these initial terms, like I said, you're that 18 year old kid that is trying to establish credit on, on your 18th birthday and not a lot of people are approving you. Hopefully after today, we can go through some steps that way you can understand what each of these credit departments at these factoring companies are evaluating on your brand new brokerage to differentiate from, from a broker that's gonna be around for the next 10 years to a broker that's planning on shutting their doors in the next two months. Most important things, guys, you gotta establish credibility. Everything from having a good website, having a good Facebook, LinkedIn is important. Having a, a Google, uh, a, a, there's a thing that's out there called Google My Business where they send you a postcard. Uh, those are all important steps that you guys need to take to, to establish yourselves on, on the internet and having some sort of social media footprint. So go out and spend a lot of time on a website, Facebook. Here's a, here's a big one, your email addresses. Our credit department is trained that if somebody is operating on a Gmail address, chances are they they can go out of business like that in two months. So invest the time and energy on good established foundations of what your company looks like before you even go to market. Next is gonna be the factoring company reference letter. Now, here's the thing. Uh, it's important for you guys to make sure that you guys trust your factoring relationships. There's a lot of bad ones that are out there. Any factoring company, <clears throat> that tells you that they are gonna be reporting on your credit and making sure that you're building credit, they're lying to you. The ones who are actually reporting on your credit are these entities down here. So what the factoring companies, what these credit departments that are looking at these factoring companies is they're looking at you at a microscope. Now, if you did not have a factoring company, my credit department's concern is that you are basically extending credit to a shipper customer that you have not looked at their credit, that you have not determined that they are a viable company to work with. So the risk of you not factoring is that my credit department goes, you're a brand new brokerage. How do you know if you're gonna get paid by your customer? Yeah, it could be a good friend of yours. It could be have this big warehouse, but what do their payment terms really look like? Are we looking at a 90 day payment? Are, are we looking at uh, uh, if you don't get paid in 90 days then we're not gonna get paid in 90 days? The second you factor with a factoring company, basically my credit department views that relationship a little bit differently because we know that this company right here is invested in making sure that they get paid. So they are looking at your relationships. They are analyzing your customers. So to guarantee that they're gonna get paid, which then means that we're gonna get paid. So the factoring reference letter, keep in mind, 
it's not really us extending credit on you as the broker. It's more or less a, a, extending credit to your factoring company. So it's a big, it, it, it provides us a little bit of comfort knowing that these factoring companies down here are going to get paid. Now, uh, there are next steps. We've got TransCredit. We've got credit references. Uh, you know, TransCredit is a good resource. It's a way to start, uh, but it's not the end all be all. So uh, this diagram right here, it kind of explains how the credit reporting process works. Every single factoring company has a software that they are using for factoring. All of the data gets sent on a one or twice a month basis to the credit agencies. Now, it just depends on which credit agencies that they're using. There's one called Factors Network, there's one called Corterra, and the big one that everybody has heard about is Ensonia. Ensonia is, they were acquired by Equifax, they are a great company, but it's peer submitted data. So all of us as consumers, we know that we have credit card payments, mortgage payments, truck payments, and all of those financial institutions are reporting our credit balances and our statements and our payment history to the top three credit agencies, the, and the Equifaxes, the Experience, and the trans, trans unions of the world. See and Sonia as basically being those consumer type of credit agencies that are being reported. Now, again, it's the factoring companies who are reporting that. So if you have a $5,000 balance with factor one, well, <coughs> Today, they're going to submit a $5,000 balance to, to the Ansonias of the world. And in 30 days, when you pay that off, guess what? Next, in the next 30 days report, it's going to show that balance being paid down to zero. So the algorithms at these credit agencies are going to start to establish a days to pay algorithm and your balance history. If you have 5,000 with all of these factoring companies down here, well, guess what? You're doing about $25,000 a month in revenue. You're paying in 30 days. That's how it works. That's the holy grail in credit reports. The Insonias, they're reporting to the DATs of the world. So that's really where you want to be. But in order to get there, you might have to start out with using services like TransCredit. How TransCredit and some credit references are a little bit different is that you submit your TransCredit data uh, you can submit a company and you can say, hey, this is like a credit reference and they'll send me a report and then I can say, yeah, I've done you know, $20,000 a month with broker ABC. They've paid me in 35 days and it's kind of a uh, kind of an honor system, so to speak, and, and how, how that credit is, is submitted to them. Uh, and so it's not the end all be all, but it's a great place to start in order to start building credit. All right, uh, next steps, guys. I always say it's important to find a preferred carrier network. Not only is it important for your guys' customer relationships, because if you've got that customer, you have to treat that relationship like gold. So you want to make sure, I always say, best practice, find five carriers that are out there that you know, that you trust with your freight, that you're not going to have claims, issues, damages. They're not going to be late. They're not going to have any issues with your customer because you have to treat that relationship like gold. Now, with those preferred carriers, the important thing is, I always say, try to find that preferred group and make sure that they have all different factoring companies. Because if you've got five preferred carriers and all carriers are working with OperFi, well, guess what? When I'm reporting that data to the credit agencies, the credit agencies are only going to report that one company is reporting on them. They're not going to report that you're working with five different carriers. It's only going to be one factoring company. So I think it's best to try to diversify and get it to as many different factoring companies that you can, which means finding five different preferred carriers with five different factoring companies. Now, here's the difference when it comes to consumer credit versus some of this business credit. It's actually a good thing if you're working with more companies, right? We're all taught as consumers that if you've got 10 different credit cards, that that's not a good thing. And the credit agencies and financial services companies see that as being a bad thing. In business credit, we see it as a good thing. We're saying, hey, if you've got multiple relationships that are extending you credit, chances are then you're able to manage that. And chances are, if I, if my credit department accepts that, then I'm gonna, I have a high likelihood that I'm going to get paid. So it's important that you guys find that preferred carrier network and try to make it as diversified as possible with multiple different background companies. Next, here's the hard part. You got to get approval from factoring companies. You have to show them that you understand how this credit system works. You have to show them that you're here to stay for the long run. I always, my tip here 
Be proactive, do not be reactive. If you are proactive, you're calling up credit departments before you have a load that you're having to, that you're trying to book. If you're calling up my credit department today because you booked a load and all of a sudden the factoring companies denied it and, and it's the only carrier that you have that's able to take this load, then it's kind of, it seems a little bit desperate. It seems like, okay, well, he didn't really do his due diligence. He really needs to haul this load. Is he paying more? Is he going to be going out of business? And so proactive versus reactive is super important. That's my tip here is that it's going to take some selling guys. You're going to have to reach out to the factoring co companies and the credit departments. Hey, Here's my website. Here's my LinkedIn. Here's my factoring reference letter. Here's my trans credit reference letter. Here's I'm 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 looking to that I'm I'm going to be probably working with one of your carriers and I want to make sure that if a carrier has a load opportunity with me that your company is not going to reject it. So you want to make sure that you guys are reaching out proactively and selling these selling these factoring companies and putting a list together so then that way those factoring companies, you know who's approved you and who hasn't, and you're reaching somebody high enough on the food chain at that factoring company. So then that way, uh, uh, if you ever do have that scenario where you're booking that load with that carrier, you can call up that individual and say, hey, remember when we spoke two months ago? I showed you my website. I showed you my factoring reference letter. How about extending me $2,500 or $5,000 worth of credit so then that way I can get this load moved? Next. Here's a, a big misconception, guys. Uh, quick pays. Avoid quick pays as much as possible. Your factoring company is going to encourage quick pays because they're going to say, hey, if the carrier doesn't get approved with their factoring company, don't worry about it. We have this quick pay program. We're going to charge 4%. We'll give you a portion of it. We'll, we'll, we'll take a portion of it. The carrier gets paid. Everything's great, right? Your customer's freight gets moved. No harm, no foul. All of it in theory sounds great. But remember, guys, we're trying to build credit. If that credit, if that load never flows through to the factoring company and it never gets submitted to the credit agencies, well, you guys are spinning your wheels. If all you're doing is paying trucks, then guess what? It's great that you're moving freight. It's great that you're earning a little bit. Your factoring company's earning it. But that data never flows through the credit department that shows that you guys are paying that off. The only time that data gets submitted is if it goes through the factoring company and gets factored and approved and gets submitted twice a month. So keep in mind, avoid quick pays. Yeah, it, it helps you. It's a Band-Aid. It can help you get freight moved. But at the end of the day, it's not that data is not flowing through the credit agencies and you're not establishing credit uh, in, in that period of time. Next tip, guys, I always say I like to pay in net 20 terms, uh, and this is only for the initial onslaught. You guys don't have to, to use this practice as a going concern going forward. You can get to the point where you're paying in net 30. Us as a factoring company, we like it when a broker says, hey, we're going to pay in net 20. Hey, that's good business for me if I can get paid faster. So if you can call me up, my credit department, you can say, hey, we're net 20 day terms, and we're showing you all this other information that shows that we are a good we are a good brand new broker. We're not some of these fraudsters and scammers that's going to be, you know, shutting our doors in, in the next 30 days. So we're going to pay in that 20 day terms. That gives us a little bit of confidence. But the other thing too, is that when you actually do pay that in 20 days, so when I get that payment and you instruct your factoring company to pay me in 20 days, I've got more confidence in you. So my $2,500 credit limit that I've extended you, now I can up it to 5,000. So you can slowly, slowly wean off of that, maybe after a three month period. But the the uh, at the end of the day, you want to keep in mind that avoiding quick pays, because you want to make sure that you're still meeting that, that timeline, right? Because if a load is done, say for example, on the 12th of the month, and if you pay it too quickly, if you pay it in 10, 10 days, you're paying it on the 22nd of the month. Well, maybe that data never had an opportunity to flow through in the first of the month. But if you paid that on the 12th of the month and then all of a sudden 30 days later or 20 days later, you're paid it on the second of the second day of the month. Then guess what? You've met that 20 day term period and you've also had your data flow through my factoring software. So paying in that 20 day terms is a good way to kind of get around the loophole of, of the, the, the data submissions from the factoring companies, but it also gives the factoring company confidence. Lastly, guys, monitor your payables. You as a trucking company, have you ever received those emails where the, the broker is saying, I never received this invoice, I never received this POD, I never received this? Well, that's because they're monitoring their payables. They wanna make sure not only are they getting paid, but they know, they know how the system works. If you're working with a carrier 
and that carrier hauls a load and delivers today, guess what? Do you honestly think that they're just sitting on that paperwork? No, they're gonna get paid by the factoring company. They're submitting it to me today. If you never receive an invoice from, from me and my fac, uh, uh, my, myself as the factoring company or any of these other factoring companies, that's not a good sign because chances are that data is still getting submitted, but you never got the paperwork, right? Never ever take the approach of, I'm gonna pay my invoices in net 30 on date of receipt because you have to think that the trucking company has already submitted that on day one. And if the factoring company made a mistake, I always like to provide the example of say a, a brokerage that has a very similar name. So there's mega logistics, there's mega core logistics. A factoring company can easily make a, make a mistake and they can invoice it to the wrong party. And then in 30 days, they're gonna find out, oh, we invoiced it to the wrong party. Now we need to change it in the system. So when they change it in the system, do you think that they're backdating that invoice on day one? No, that invoice is now 30 days old and you're not getting it. On, you're, you're now getting it on day 30. If you pay that in 30 days, I'm reporting on you that you paid it <coughs> in 60 days. So it's important to monitor your payables, making sure that your carriers and the factoring companies aren't reporting things. Every single TMS system that's out there has a load booking section, an in route section, and a load completed section. But load completed, it's waiting for invoices. It's waiting for that load and getting the paperwork so you can submit that the, the documentation, the bills over to your customer. Make sure that you monitor that load completed section like a hawk. Make sure that you have received all your documentation within 24 hours, 48 hours. If you don't get your, your invoice or your proof of delivery and you don't know who you're paying, you need to be hounding that carrier and saying, I never received this invoice from your factoring company, what's going on? <clears throat> That's it guys, uh, that's a brief explanation of kind of how to build credit. Uh, it's it's a little bit different from what a lot of other companies that are reporting out there that the factoring companies say they help you build credit. Guys, the, the important thing to keep in mind is that the factoring companies are your creditors. So you need to make sure that you establish those relationships and in order to get approved by them, follow these steps. And the big thing I can't stress enough, establish credi credibility, get a good website, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, get a good solid professional email address, stay away from the Gmails. Uh, and, and obviously if you guys have any questions, happy to answer anything, reach out to me directly. We can go through all this stuff, but looking forward to, to watching you guys grow. If you guys have any questions or wanna reach out to me, my number is 682-330-7700. I'm happy to pull credit reports on Insonia for you so that way you can see what your status looks like. and provide resources for other factoring companies that might be able to help you guys out. Thank you very much and best of luck.